Okay, my list. So today we're going to make a start on our M16 multiple gun motor carriage. Uh, this is the one that's got the the quad guns on the back. Now this is going to be a good uh, a good model to show off what you can do with a single colour scheme. Uh, this is going to be just done in all the olive drab. Now there is a, um, a, a option in there for one of them with um, a camouflage pattern, which is like a black a flat black over the olive thing, like patches. But I'm just going to do the green because I've had a couple of questions from people about how to paint, say, Russian armour or, you know, armour that's just one colour um, to try and liven that one colour up a little bit because it just looks too bland if you just paint it and put a bit of dust on it. So this would be a good option to liven this up a little bit. We'll do a bit of fading and a bit of uh, weathering techniques and certain things to, to sort of bring this to life. Now, I've got a few um, extras I can put on this kit as well. Um, just to sort of bring it to life a little bit more like as far as you know bed rolls and camouflage nets and things like that just to bring it to life one of the things with doing armor if you can add some extra detail to it especially things like that on the outside um, it does make it pop a bit more because you've got a bit more stuff hanging off it um, it's variations in color because obviously your backpacks and your bed rolls and all that are different colors um, so that'll bring it to life a little bit as well uh, so I'll start on this kit guys. I'll open it up now while I've got you on the camera just to show you I have had this one open already Okay, now it's a, it is a very very good kit this one apparently So there's all your options on the back for your different um, Schemes that you can paint it in instructions typical dragon very straightforward as far as you know nice layout on the page and things like that It is a fairly involved build because there's an engine there's full suspension all that sort of stuff and you see down here with, where you put the engine in and that um, so it is a fairly um, involved sort of a build. There's a little bit of etch comes with it, not a lot, just those couple of panels there. We've got our decals there. Only clear part is inside the headlights and also the windscreen. Um, the windscreen has a metal cover that goes over it with two slots. Like if they're in, if they're under fire, they could pull that metal plate down and just look through the slots like a tank sort of thing. Um, I might have that metal plate sitting up. I think at this stage. Uh, a few other little details there, like a tow rope, bit of chain, stuff like that. As far as the sprues go, I've been through these now. Very, very nice. I mean, typical from Dragon. And this is one of their smart kits. Um, and there's no flash on there. There's a few injector pin marks we may need to get rid of, like in the back part of the the, the, uh, the truck and things like that. But um, very, very nice sprues. Everything's, you know, moulded very, very nice. There's a few options to have things open, closed, things like that. Um, all the quad cannon stuff's there. Now the quad cannons go together in quite a few different parts So it's going to take a while just to get those together um, Plus there's going to be a mix of you know like your, your gun metal colors with your green canisters for ammo and uh, MO feed belts and things like that um, But everything's really nicely molded as you can see beautiful detail on some of this stuff very very nice I mean these are dragon kits like this you, you just know pretty much what you're going to get um, now these are all the suspension and the engine parts now that there's quite a few parts to put together the, the engine you can have the the hood open to show the the engine uh, The engines not fully detailed. I mean, it's nice. It's it's okay But you could probably put a bit of wire in there for for leads and things like that But um, I'm gonna have a look at that want to put it together and see what it's like I may just build this out of box, but then again I may just add some detail if I want to have that hood open to show the engine off um, ideally, if I had the engine open, I'd like to have someone looking into it, like it, as in they're working on it or checking the oil or something like that. Uh, but that's something I'm going to have a look at as I go through the build, guys. Uh, our tracks uh, in these things here, you can see those one-piece tracks that go around there. Now, there's good and bad in that. <clears throat> the bad is that you don't get the option to mould them around much and not individual tracks where you can sort of have them sort of bending up if they're running over rocks and things like that. But the good thing about these versus vinyl is you can actually soften these up a little bit and bend them just slightly, but you've got to be very careful. Don't bend them too much and break them. Um, if you do break them, obviously you can glue them back together, but um, yeah, it's better not to break them in the first place. So when I get to that part of the video, I'm going to have a play with them, see how they go, how they, how they behave when I try and bend them up. I just want to put just the slightest little bit of sag, maybe. Um, I know these these half tracks, the the... British half tracks and the American half tracks you didn't have a lot of sag in these tracks anyway. They were pull, pulled pretty taut over the suspension and that, so we don't need a lot in it, just a little bit. Uh, there's a few little added extras there, a couple of jerry cans I can see, and um, there's actually a driver down here we can put in there if you wanted to. 
But anyway guys, so what I'll do, I'll get on with this build and we will be turning the camera back on as we need to. Okay modelers, so I've just sort of just started the build, I'm getting the engine together here at the moment. And I've come across a bit of a mistake in the instructions, so if you're ever building this, just be aware of this mistake. Uh, on here it's got the, the fan and it's got an arrow pointing to the bottom part of the engine block, which is like down in here, down in the bottom part. I'll get this in focus a bit more for you. If I can. Okay, it's saying that it wants to put it on here and it's the wrong place. It's got to go up on the top part of the engine now. Uh, the only reason I sort of got this is because I have two pages of instructions open to me in front and when I went to put it in there there's no real notch or anything for that to go on there and I thought it doesn't look right there was a notch at the top. So I went forward in the instructions and seen some more diagrams of the engine on the next page and it, it obviously has to go on the top part here so just be aware of that it doesn't go onto that bottom notch there it goes onto this top one on this side up here in this corner um, it's just one of those little things with um, instructions that you know, sometimes I get little things wrong but yeah just be aware of that when you do this build guys if you ever do it um, the fan has to go at the top and if you look at most engines it's common sense anyway normally the fan is up somewhere high where you can see it up the top they don't really mount them down the bottom just a little thing to be aware of guys, and I'll turn the camera back okay, on. Okay, modelers, so I'm putting the uh, the wheels together here. Now these are only two pieces, there's a insert in the back here. Um, typical drag and stuff, it's sort of over-engineered, there's no need to sort of, you know, put an insert in the back. Um, most kits, well a lot of kits have, you know, the tyre will go over the rim, but uh, for some reason Dragon decided to engineer it so that an insert goes into the back of the tyre here. But what I wanted to show you is on these tyres there is actually I'm hoping you can pick it up on the camera. There's actually a flat spot there to take the load. Like when you put it down, that's the part that's going to be on the bottom. So it looks like there's actually a load on that tyre. Now, that's a good idea from Dragon. But the problem is when you see tyres that have got a load on them, there's actually a bulge in here as well. You can replicate that bulge by putting um, like a, a string of putty or something over it. But um, I mean, most people don't notice it. But it is something if, you, if you're going to go into it, um, you know, competition wise and things like that, you, you need to put a bit of a bulge in there. Um, I'm not going to worry about it on this kit because this is not a competition model, it's just to show you guys. But I just thought I'd make you aware of when you're doing kits, just check for things like that where there's flat spots for where the, the tyre is supposed to sit. Because if you get it wrong, uh, it'll really stand out once you start painting it. Then the flat spot on the tyre, if you, uh, if you have it sitting up like this, and the flat spot's halfway up there you're going to see that. See that flat spot there? Make sure when you put it together that it's definitely on the bottom. So I'm not going to put these tyres on until like pretty much the last stages of the build to make sure that I get it right, okay? Um, as far as like I say with the bulge in the bottom, you can put that there if you want um, or, or leave it off. I'm going to leave it off in this case. These are going to be fairly heavy, heavily weathered um, like it's in the European theatre so these tyres and the rims and are going to have a fair bit of dirt and stuff on it and it, it'll draw your attention to that rather than the fact there's no bulge in that tyre. If it was a clean build like a car or or something off a factory line, I'd definitely put a bulge in there to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, I will do a video on that at a later stage with putting bulges in tyres and stuff like that and to make them look realistic. Um, but yeah, just be aware if you're building this kit guys or look at any kit when you're putting tyres on, if there's flat spots, make sure okay, they go well, to the Just forgive the camera being a bit shaky here. I still haven't got my tripod set up. Um, I'm missing that adapter. So um, I just want to show you on this part here, hopefully you can see it. There's a couple of um, like injector pin marks like on this piece. I'll see if I can get it to get up the camera a bit closer. And hopefully you can see those on there. Okay, so they obviously have to be taken care of. Now they're on the inside of the doors. Uh, and they're on both of them, so if you do this kit, make sure you you see those and get rid of them because um, they're really going to stand out, especially if you have a door open or something like that. If you've got the door closed, it might be a bit hard to spot them, but if you look in there, you, you look hard enough, you definitely will see them. They're not very deep, but um, I'm just going to sand these ones out, And but just be aware of it if you build this kit, guys. Uh, the next part is we've got our chassis together here with the engine in it. Um, with the tracks on the back. Now, you can, hopefully you can see on the video, I'll get this to come up here. Uh, it's not going to focus there where I want it to. 
I want to get my tripod back a bit better, but hopefully you can see I've put a little bit of sag in the top of those tracks, like not a lot, but just a little bit. Now, they looked horrible when they're just moulded straight. They look really, really... And you see down around the bottom road wheels there, they just don't look natural because they're just too straight, the bends in them. Um, so I sort of bent them a little bit, just really gently to get that little bit of sag in the top there. Um, the chassis went together fairly well. It's not really buckled or anything. There was a couple of little... Um, issues where it was a little bit sort of shaking, a little bit skew if, but um, with a bit of filing and sanding and um, slightly bending some of the plastic again, uh, it all sort of went together not too bad. Um, I've got the cab um, into, well, not completely together yet, but um, as you can see, I've got done a bit of work on that. And all this stuff, all the interior stuff, I, I, what I'm thinking of doing at this stage, so I'll paint all the interior stuff and I'll stick some foam in there when I start doing the outside because um, it's going to be too hard to paint the gauges and all the little sticks and everything in there uh, once the cab's built around it. Even though there's an open roof, um, yeah, once it's all together, it'll <clears throat> just be too much, too much work to try and, or just too difficult to get down inside there and paint all the little details. So... At this stage, I'm thinking about painting this um, before I put it together. And once I get it together, I'll put some foam in there to paint the rest, like do the outside of it. Okay, guys, I'll turn the video on back on. Okay, um, so I sort stage. of bounced ahead a little bit here. Um, I didn't have my camera for a, a while there, so I couldn't actually record some of the stuff I'd done. I have got the engine in there. I'm, I'm going to have the bonnet open like that. I've done a little bit of detail work to the engine, not a lot, I've just put um, spark leads on it which um, I just made out of a little bit of copper wire. I'll show you what I mean, this stuff here. Okay, I just cut bits of that off. Um, just went from the distributor over to the, the plugs sort of thing, or the injectors or whatever they are. Um, but that's all I sort of done, then I painted it and then I weathered it up, like made it look a little bit grubby and dirty looking in there. Uh, you can't see it much even with that one bonnet open. You could open both up, have both sides open and you could see a lot more, but I just wanted to have the one side open to show it off a little bit. Um, one thing is, if you open the bonnet up, there's a bit of a gap down in here. I'll, I'll try and point it out with the file a little bit for you. Down in here. Okay, so I put a little bit of plastic sprue in there and um, try and make it look like part of this box. I'll sand that back and tidy it up a little bit to make it look like it's part of the box in there. Um, so just be aware of that because there is a pretty nasty looking sort of gap down in there that shouldn't be there. Uh, looking at reference photos and that anyway. Um, so, but that, other than that, everything else is okay. Everything sort of went together fairly well. Um, just be a little bit careful with putting the chassis and that together because um, once it's together, like, sit it down, make sure everything's nice and level and straight. I did have a bit of a twist in this. Uh, it took me a while to discover where the problem was, but um, I finally got it and straightened it out. You have to make sure that's nice and straight. If, if it's not, it'll just throw the whole model off when it's finished because you'll have wheels sitting up off the ground, which just won't look right. Um, the front plate on here, this um, frame, like a sort of like a bull bar or recess bar or something, um, that was a little bit crooked as well because it comes off part of the chassis and I hadn't glued it on properly. I thought I had, but I actually hadn't. So. I had to actually dissolve the joints and pull it off and re-glue it to get that nice and straight. Um, inside the the cabin, I'll try and zoom in a little bit here for you. Okay, inside the cabin here, I've just done a little bit of um, like interior paint work. Hopefully you can see the gauges. I'll bring the light over a little bit more. You can see the gauges are painted up in there. Um, we've got our fire extinguisher. I uh, put a bit of dirt on the floor. That's just a bit of weathering powder, a couple of different colours of weathering powder. Uh, done a bit of an oil wash before the powders um, with the seats just done them in that leather tan color um, done a dark wash over that and everything's sort of sealed in there now with a, a flat coat um, i haven't done the inside of the doors yet uh, because what i'm going to do is put a sponge inside all this area in here when i paint the outside and then i'll do the doors in because they're actually the same color as the outside that olive drab color um, then I'll have to put a bit of wear and stuff on the inside of the doors because they would have copped a bit of a hide and been inside there. Um, but anyway guys, that's that's where we're up to and um, I'll, I'll keep going on this and I'll turn the camera back on when we get to the next uh, Just another quick note guys, with the grill on the front here, now you can have this open like that using the edge parts or there is actually a part where you can have it, I'll see what I've got it over the side here, okay. 
that part there you can have it closed just put that part into it uh, I, I wanted to have it open to try and throw a bit more light up into the engine bay so you can see the engine a bit better um, now if you do use the edge parts there's there's no folding involved in it but you have to spend a bit of time to make sure that the grills are all evenly open um, if you don't it just I had one that wasn't right and the glue had set and I put it down and when I looked at it I thought oh no that's just ruined the whole thing but luckily I was able to break the set with a little bit of a debonder and, um, and then re-glue it after that had dried up and yeah it looks quite good there now once it's painted you won't, <clears throat> you won't notice anything anyway probably but um, just be aware that those grills are all separate and you have to put them in and make, there's little slots in there but because it's plastic and metal there's a bit of give like you can move them a little bit each way so yeah spend the time make sure they're all nice and okay, lined windows. up in there guys just a quick update here the uh the bonnet that i had up there before i had um like this top piece lifted up but i've looked at some diagrams and some um, photos online the bonnet's actually lifted in two pieces like this as you can see on here um don't take too much notice of the gaps like i'm going to try and tidy those up you can see this little gap there and there um, but those those would have been separate pieces of tin would have had a gap there anyway so what i'm going to do is uh, use like a blade and just scrape that out later on when the glue set to make it look like there is a gap there and there's two pieces of tin sort of folded up now one thing to remember they have um, rubber like a little rubber pull down part here and here actually i'll point to it with tweezers and might work out a bit better one there and one there okay so when it's lifted you'll have like that little hinge will actually be hanging off the end there a little bit so i've got a couple of photo etch parts um, from like old photo etch kits that i'm going to use to to make that little end on there um, i've had to fill that box in as I say this box under the dash if you don't do that you can see straight down into the floor into the pedals and stuff like that um, looking at pictures of the real thing that actually was covered up um, there's actually a lot more parts in there but like i say, i'm not going to super detail this thing it's more for um, showing you the techniques of fading a green color and stuff like that uh, the front grill I, 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 I took it off um, I tried the other grill on there I've been sort of playing with the two of them with the open grill you're looking straight into that radiator um, so it's not actually leaving much light in there so what I might do is put the closed um, grills on the front it's going to make it a bit easier to put the decals on there I sort of look forward into the into the um, instructions there's actually a star on the front of that grill so um, trying to do that with photo etched parts that are fairly fine and that um, and it can be done um, but yeah it'll be a real pain and I'm not into super detailing this kit it's just sort of put it together and put a few little extras on it but um, I don't want to sort of spend you know hours just trying to get a star on the front of there so um, if I put the one that's already closed um, it's not going to you know cut any light or anything like that out um, and I'll be able to put the decal on there much easier but as you can see guys i'm not sure how much you can see of that engine i'll try and lift it up a little bit but um i've weathered that up sort of dirted it up so it's all oily and stony looking underneath there uh, obviously i've got to paint that white box under there uh, that that's going to be um in a flat black color underneath there i've seen separate photos where some of it shows a black some of it shows a green um, some of them show green all underneath the bonnet and some show flat black underneath the bonnet um, I'm just going to do the flat black on there, it's going to make it easier. Uh, obviously when I spray the whole kit I'm going to have to put a sponge up inside there or try and mask that off as well, otherwise the, the green overspray is going to go on there and ruin all that, that engine detail and all the painting I've done on there. Um, and the same with the dash and everything like I was saying. But anyway guys, that was just a little tip there, that's how the bonnets raise on these things, I made a mistake. Um, <laughs> these things happen. I was looking at a diagram of someone else who had built the kit um, rather than putting, like, you know, looking at the actual vehicle itself with the bonnet raised. And uh, when I seen the actual pictures, that's what happens. It's a two piece thing, um, sort of undoes and lifts up in two pieces like that. Anyway, guys, I'll keep going on with this and uh, I'll start the video the at the next stage. I'll put the guns together here now, little quad cannons that go on the back of the truck. And uh, yeah, as you can see, that it's it's really nicely detailed. Obviously, it has to be painted yet. But um, when you're putting this together, it, it does take a bit of lining up, like everything doesn't sort of just fall together like a Tamiya kit. There is a little bit of sort of little bit of play in some of the parts that you have to muck around, get things to line up, make sure all your 
your barrels are pointing in the same direction that, that, that your um, MO canisters are sort of hanging on the right slope and all that sort of thing that there is slots for them to go into but there's a fair bit of give in them and there's a fair bit of play uh, the ones that the canisters hang off are very delicate and I broke a couple of them when I was trying to put them on there um, so I learnt my lesson after the first two what I had to do is file down the actual pin um, so they went on a little bit easier but um, yeah like I say it's a bit of play spend your time lining these things up because if you don't it will actually ruin the whole look of the thing if you've got cannons that are out of alignment or canisters that are out of alignment it's something you'll really pick up and uh, it'll it'll annoy you no end because you'll know it's there so spend your time lining all that sort of stuff up but um, fairly detailed really nice and I think once it's painted it's going to look really nice this little canister bay here but anyway guys um, that's the, the quad guns and I'm getting onto the back tray now um, filling out the back tray and I'll paint that as well and I'll turn the video on when we get to that stage. Okay, model is so the stage we're up to, uh, I've got it all painted up now. Now I've been around picked out the black detail as you can see here on the guns and the tyres and things like that and the tracks. Um, all I've done is just put the, the base coat of the olive drab over it and you know picked out the black and the, you know, the chair colours in the back here and so on. Uh, the other thing I've done is, I'm not sure if you can see it on this camera too much, I've put a bit of fading just in the centre of these bigger panels. Uh, that's only a little bit of, uh, to me, a buff paint mixed in with the olive drab and just a, just a light mist into those, that, like it just sort of fades those panels down just a little bit in the centre just to give a little bit of life to start with. Uh, so then I overcoated everything with a coat of uh, Johnson, Johnson's floor polish. Uh, it's just a clear coat. And the next stage is I'm going to put some decals on. And um, once the decals are on there, I'm going to have to weather the decals up as well because you know, it just doesn't look right if the rest of the vehicle's going to be faded and, and that. But the decals are still nice and bright and white. <coughs> um, if I had the time, um, if I was going to be putting this in shows or anything like that, I'd probably be spray painting the decals on there. I'd use stencils. I'd cut out the, the decals on the sheet here. Uh, make stencils and um, actually airbrush them on there but um, the decals will do fine for this is just a bit of a demo to show you like fading techniques and how to make a an all green vehicle bring it to life a little bit so anyway guys I'll get carried on with putting the decals on there and I'll turn the camera back on at the next okay, step so I'm at the point now where I'm actually doing a little bit of fading um, since I last started the video I put I had the clear overcoat over it I done a dark wash over the whole vehicle uh, then I'll put a clear satin coat on there, um, it's just the stuff here, the Vallejo satin varnish. Um, and the reason I've done that is to um, sort of protect the vehicle and the satin rather than the gloss helps the weathering to stick to it a little bit better. If you're a bit unsure you can try the gloss but the thing with the gloss is really hard to get the weathering to stick to it. But the good thing about it is if you don't like it you can actually wipe it straight back off again without it damaging the the actual base coat but I've got a satin on this one here I didn't use the matte because satin's a good mixture between the two if you've got matte on there you haven't really got a hope of undoing your mistakes um, and all I'm doing at the moment is going around doing a bit of fading on the the center parts of all the panels as you can probably hopefully you can pick up on the back here uh, I hope that camera's focusing for you and you can see there those center panels are sort of faded out a little bit it's starting to change the appearance where you know, it's not just one one base coat colour, like a dull, just one colour sort of thing. Okay, and I'm just going to show you how I do that. What I'll do, I'll do it on the front part of the, the vehicle here, up on this guard. I'll try and zoom the camera in a little bit for you. Okay. Now, all I've done, I've got some, these are just oils mixed on the side here. I've got a, a really light green colour in there. Now, I've just used this big flat brush, I'll put it in there and then I wipe off the excess on a tissue okay make sure you've got just about all the paint off you don't want to have too much left on there that's only leaving like you know little traces of green on there now and that's all you want and all I do is in the center of the panel just sort of lightly brush backwards and forwards and hopefully you can see that's actually starting to fade that the center of that panel out there a little bit now okay now the, the more you do it the more it will obviously fade that panel out um, hopefully that's focusing enough for you. So I'll do a little bit more on this front mudguard. Sort of 
stick to the middle a little bit okay now hopefully that's enough that you should be able to pick that up on there if you see that that's sort of the center part of that now is has changed color okay I'll do a little bit on the bonnet here okay, just up on this panel just lightly and hopefully you can see that's faded that panel back okay you can see up the middle there where it's faded the center of that panel back okay now this is not like the final step because that's still like to me it's it's nice it's a nice effect but it's still two-toned it's it's a, a light color you know a lighter green with a darker green so we're going to go over after i finish going around the whole um, piece of armor with doing this technique then we're going to start adding some streaks and streaking effects to it and then on to the weathering powders and so on but that's just my first step in the weathering just going around fading all those those panels down in the center there are other, are other ways to do this um, you can do it when you're at the painting stage so that when you're spraying the model um, you can put a bit of buff in your paint to lighten and spray that in the center of the panel so it, it lightens it up that way you can do it that way I just like using this because I have a lot more control over what I'm doing so anyway guys I'll keep going with this and I'll turn it back on when we get to the streaking okay, stage. So the point I'm up to now, I'm just starting to put some streaking effects on the on the vehicle itself. I'm working on the, the, the quad gun separate over to the side there because I've got a bit, bit of different work I'm doing on those. But to show you what I'm actually doing on the vehicle, you can see the front half of the tray here. I've already done the streaking effects up this end. <clears throat> As you can see, it breaks the green up, like really, really breaks it up. So you haven't got any single tones or too many of any one tone. Now you can do the streaking effects with all sorts of things, you can do it with oils, um, if you've painted it backwards as in got an oil base down you can put a um, acrylic streaking on it, acrylics are a bit harder to work with, oils give you more time. Um, at the moment I'm actually using the, um, the AK Interactive, these guys here, okay, and I'm using um, two dust tones, I'm using two streaking grime effects, two green ones there and I'm using like a rusted grimy sort of tone there as well um, now what I do I'll put down the lighter color uh, the darker colors and go over it with the lighter colors and work one at a time <clears throat> but all I basically do I'll just show you with the dark green color first uh, I think it stands out a little bit better so all I do i have shaken the bottle up a little bit and I like to keep the dark colors towards the bottom you can put a little bit at the top, like so, okay. You don't need a lot of this stuff, you only need a little bit because you're actually going to be spreading it all over the place, okay. Just little bits, like so. Now, most people, when they use these, what they do now is let that dry and then use um, like a white spirit on a brush to brush that all in. Um, I actually prefer, while that's still wet, to actually streak that like so it just gives it a bit of a start okay at this stage you don't want to be brushing up and down just like a couple of strokes now as you can see that's already sort of worked its way in a little bit but um, now I just put the brush into white spirit and then dry it off onto a tissue so it's not too wet and I'll start working it a little bit more okay Forgive me if I'm not talking while I'm doing this. I'm just I'm really find it hard to see the angle I'm on. I just don't want to get in the road of the camera here as to where I've got it set up. Okay. Now because I've got a nice clear gloss coat underneath this, it allows me to work with those colours quite a bit. Um, now if I don't like that I can actually get use the tissue and I can actually wipe that off now before it dries because they're actually oil based paint it takes them a long time to dry if I've done something and think oh no I don't like the look of that I could actually now wipe that off with cotton buds or tissue or whatever <clears throat> take it right back to that glossy coat and so that's that's all I'm doing and then I'll put the light green next I'll put the light green I'll put more of that at the top than at the bottom and then I'll put the dust effects on there um, the rust I normally put last, I try and put it around 
like the hinges or bolt heads or things like that so it looks like a bit of a streak coming off those things i have actually got streaking rust there as well but it's a bit bright for this color it just looks too too bright there's too much of it there um, when you go over the decals just be careful don't put too much of the green over there because the green just won't look natural on it but the dust colors will look fine over the top of it um, if you do put some green over it it's fine like i say you got time to, to get it off just put a dip your brush into a bit of white spirit and wash it back off there um, but like i say this is not this is not the finished effect yet there's going to be a bit of dust um, mist it on there and a bit of i'm going to use pastel powders to sort of put some more different streaks on there as well um, but anyway i've got to go around the whole vehicle and do this um, once i've done this then i'll go on to weathering the tracks and the road wheels and all that sort of stuff separate again so anyway guys i'll keep cracking on with this and i'll turn the camera back on when we get to the next step okay modeler so we're up to the part now where i'm actually starting to use the uh the weathering powders on the on the armor and um, dirty it right up like get all the dust and stuff on it so all the steps we've done before uh, do get covered a little bit in this stage but if you hadn't faded the paint and made it different colors you wouldn't get the same sort of look uh, maybe a little bit hard to see when it's sitting like that I'll, what i'll do i'll put it on the side so you get a better idea so we got more dirt from the bottom and a bit cleaner as it moves up uh, i'm going to clean a little bit around the door here where the the driver would have got in and out because they would have kept that fairly clean when they're getting in and out rubbing against it all the time um, the tire i'll show you how i do the tire on the other side but um, as you can see, it, uh, it comes up quite nice. It's got a nice effect. You can still see that streaking that we done earlier on along the side here up the top part. And uh, the, the tracks on this side are just about done. Uh, I've just got to put some black on where the rubber is there. Um, but yeah, it gives you an idea. I put a bit of dust inside. I've still got to finish that off a little bit though. I've got to clean it out a little bit. There's just a bit too much in there. Um, so what I'm going to do now, guys, I'll, I'll quickly show you on the other side um, how... I actually do the weathering with the powders because I haven't done this side yet so what I'll do I'll get it to tip up a little bit like that now all I've got is the weathering powders here I've got three different colors okay so they're just MIG weathering powders um, as you can see you can use pastel chalks and things like that but um, I just find that the MIG stuff is it works really well it's really fine um, and it sticks really well to the, the surface. So the first thing we do, and just get my old brush out, make sure you use an old an old rubbish brush for this. You don't want to use anything good because um, you're pretty much going to destroy it when you do this. So um, I did have another brush here. I'll just try to find where it is. Oh, there, that one there, that'll do. Okay, so all I do, just get a bit of weathering powder on the brush and to do the sides I just step a little on the bottom here like so okay that's the first color and I get a little bit of the second color okay mix it in there a little bit okay and a bit of the third color as well now you sort of got to staple it into this part here because this is the part you want sort of stained up okay like so put a little bit over the star now a lot of it as you can see falls off as you're doing the stippling uh, but that's fine okay I'll just blow the excess off there now all I do I use a big flat brush like this and just brush it lightly very very gently up the sides like so now what that does it makes that that line of powders that you put on there not so specific it's not like um like it's not like a real strong demarcation mark you can see where it sort of fades out as it goes up okay now you may have to do this a few times to get the effect that you want now that's that's just doing it one time on the other side i've done that about i think i've done it four times so far and eventually you get a really nice dark stain down here along the bottom and just a bit more faded up along the top there as you've seen now to do inside the tracks and all that it's the same sort of thing i just get the powder and put in there okay now make sure when you do this you put it all right down inside all in in suspension all on your road wheels okay and don't forget to use your different colors mix it up a little bit and get right up underneath these guards here like so 
Okay, make sure you get plenty in there. Again, get the third colour there now and put a bit of that in there. That's exhaust you can see moving around there, guys. I've still got to paint that in a rusty colour yet. Okay, so I've got a fair bit of powder in there now. Okay, on all the road wheels, like so. And then all I do, I've just got some um, white spirit on the side here. And I just dip my brush in that. And I'll just dab it onto the surface so it soaks into all that that weathering powder. And what that does, it helps it sort of hang on there a little bit, makes it sort of you know stick to the surface a little bit. Make sure we put plenty up underneath the guards here. You're gonna have to build the stuff up under the guards because mud and dirt and stuff would have collected up underneath the guards. That's the part that probably would have got the dirtiest on these, okay. All the suspension underneath here would have been fairly grubby as well. Now you don't want to sort of brush this around too much when you're putting the white spirit on because um, that'll give you an absolutely different look again uh, once you brush the, the stuff around. Okay, put it down underneath where my finger is there. It's a little bit um, hard to sort of see the, the angle that I'm on here guys but Anyway, so that's all you do for the suspension, and then when that's dry, I, I just get a, a that big wide brush in there again, and give it a bit of a brush, and what that does, it dusts the top stuff off, so it's not all clumpy looking, it leaves it dusty, then I'll do it a second time, um, and see how that goes, and if it looks okay, I leave it at that. Now with the tracks, um, I do pretty much the same thing, except... At the last step with the tracks, I just rub my finger over or rub a brush over to get it off the because the, these are rubber pads on the outside here. Um, and then later on, I'll get some black pastel and go over and just brush it on really lightly over those pads, like dry brushing with, with pastel um, to give those pads a black look. And then I give it a quick dusting again because they, they would, they'd still have dust on them. Now, with the, the tyre, the front wheel here, um, it's pretty much the same technique as what I just showed you there. You, you build up all your three different colours on there, um, like put plenty on there, um, use your white spirit to make it stick and then let that dry completely and then when it's dry I use my finger or first off I use a brush just to brush off a little bit of the excess then I use my nice clean finger and run around the tyre edge okay so what that does, let's quickly show you the other side again you can see the front tyre on this side how it's got that appearance of being you got that the side walls uh, got that nice dark appearance and the dust is also left in the treads now I still do I do the same technique around the edges of the tires like around the flat surface the running surface of it as well and it gives you that same appearance where it's the dust and mud and everything's collected inside the tread and it's stuck in there and then you use your finger or some black pastel right over it and it looks like it's been running on you know just a dusty road or something and yeah so anyway guys that's there's not much you know like it's not a big secret any big secrets in that it's just basic weathering um, and as you can see it comes up pretty good and it's fairly easy um, and the other thing I like about using this technique is it's fairly quick so this is a like it's these are great techniques for using you know on green armor or you know one colored armor obviously if you're using like a, a german tank just done in dark yellow or something like that or some of the modern armor um, you have to use a few different colors and a few different techniques to get that to sort of shine but on darker colors that's a, it's a great these are great techniques to use on it um, there's lots of other techniques you can use as well but um, these ones i sort of use most of the time because they give me the look I'm after and I'm happy with it so at the end of the day you're doing the models for yourself if they please you but you've got it right so uh, the other thing too just remember to make sure you put your mud and stuff up underneath this side as well um, I've done it on the other side of these already because if people get down and view you'll see that you've got clean you know wheels and stuff down here it just doesn't look right and the same with doing your tyre um, make sure you put plenty of stuff up underneath there now there's going to be a couple more steps before I finish this off. I'm going to do a few um, mud flicking techniques to flick a bit of mud up over it, um, and I'll just put a, a flat paint over it to um, to hold all the pastel on there so you can handle it without wiping it off with your fingers. And that'd pretty much be it, guys. I guess um, you can do some chipping and stuff on them if you really want to. I'll, I'll put a bit of um, metallic up over the 
the rails here um, on the door handles and stuff like that where it would have been polished metal because they used it all the time um, but other than that that's pretty much that's pretty much how I'm going to finish it off guys so I'll keep cracking on with it and I'll turn the camera back on when we're at the finishing stages okay modelers so we're actually finished off there now and as you can see I've done the weathering powders all over the whole thing uh, I've put a, a like a matte coat over it um, it's it's just a standard matte coat that to, just to hold the weathering powders on there uh, you don't spray it on too thick otherwise the effect of the weathering powders actually disappears the, the, the more you put on the, the less you'll see the weathering powders underneath it um, I've put on a bit of um, stowage as you can see I've got a net up here at the front that I made out of just a bit of um, medical mesh just you roll it up, use white glue to sort of you know hold it all together and shape it over the guard and then I used um, just uh, cotton to sort of wrap around it and painted the cotton in a brown colour like a rope uh, the boxes, the stowage boxes, they came from uh, another kit. Um, all the other stowage you can see, oh, it's just bits and pieces that I've had left over from other kits that I pulled out and painted up and threw on here. Um, yeah, so not much to say, guys. The kit, really nice kit, went together really nice. Just, just those couple little problems I was saying about making sure the chassis sits right and um, up the front here, putting all your uh, winch mechanisms in was a little bit sort of tricky because things didn't line up quite right. Uh, the quad guns went together not too bad. There's a little bit of a um, little bit of play in the plugs when you put the pieces together, so you've got to wiggle them around a bit and get them, you know, all lined up and nice and straight. Now, I haven't glued the guns in because that gives me the option to be able to, you know, move them around and play them wherever I want them, you know, wherever I decide to display the thing. Anyway, I'll give you a quick look around it. Um, I think everything else is stuck on there pretty well. Now most of the stowage I put on um, is held on with blue tack at the moment and the reason for that is because I, I want to take it off and use it on other models later on. Um, some of this was bought specifically in an add-on kit for the, um, the M7 Priest so I want to use it on that later on so I've just put it on with blue tack at the moment. And I'm trying to get it, grab it by the right sort of places so I don't break anything. So that's our back end there nice and weathered as you can see a nice dust effect coming up there um, there's the other side of her so yeah guys I'll take some still photos so you can get a, a much better look around it um, hopefully the video is showing up like just how nice that dust effect comes up with you know sort of only so far up the guards and you know a bit lighter towards the tops uh, yeah guys so absolutely recommend the kit if you if you like doing half track and like um, the British or uh, the American half track stuff this one is a beautiful kit I, I noticed this kit here is a there is other options in there so obviously um, it's the same kit for the other options with the half tracks uh, this one's the quad cannon one but obviously there's some that have other other things as well I didn't put the stowage boxes on the back I, I just like the look of that flat back with all the dust up it um, but yeah guys absolutely recommend the kit if you want to ever do a half track this is definitely a beautiful kit to do um, I'm pleased with the results it looks nice um, I I know there's a headlight missing off this side here that's deliberate I broke that off and I've put a bit of um, damage sort of there so it looks like you know, when they've been loading gear on the front they've broken it off I've got the one on the other side bent so it looks like you know they've been throwing gear up there and it's bent it you know like by accident but um, yeah guys we'll take some still photos for you um, to give you a closer look at everything and really hope you enjoyed this build um, any questions leave them below um, if you haven't sub sub guys because there's going to be more of these builds coming up and uh, I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching guys